Hey guys, it's Tori, and in honor of her Storyathon for 2024, I am going to be discussing 10 books that I love that follow women in history. I have five that are nonfiction and five that are fiction, so let's just jump right into them. We'll start with the nonfiction, and the first one I have here is one I've mentioned a couple of times recently, so that's why I'm starting with it so we can kind of get it out of the way, but I do really want to mention it, and that is Romantic Outlaws by Charlotte and that is Romantic Outlaws by Charlotte Gordon. I love this book. This book follows Mary Shelley and her mother Mary Wollstonecraft and it's so well written. The balance between learning about each of the women is so strong and well done and these women are just really fascinating for the time period they lived in and the way they lived their lives. They're very flawed individuals but they also have a lot of strength to them and I just love how well-rounded of people they are shown to be in this book and I just yeah I really really love this book. I know a lot of people here on booktube do so if you haven't read it definitely check it out. It's just truly wonderful. I have two other books that are literary women so I'm just going to stick with those for now. The next one I have to mention is Jane Austen at Home by Lucy Worsley. I really enjoy this biography of Jane Austen. In it we follow Jane Austen's life through the homes she lived in but really it is an overall look at Jane Austen's experience. It's just kind of centered in where she's moving to and things that happen in specific settings because of where she's living. I've heard several before that this isn't the best place to start with a Jane Austen biography. I did start with it and I thought it was fine. I thought I learned a lot. I understood what was going on. It just had a specific format to it but it wasn't difficult to understand or anything like that. So definitely I think it's a great one to read if you're just interested in Jane Austen. For a biography it's not terribly long. It's kind of middling as far as length of those. Lucy Worsley is a great historian and great author and I really loved getting to know this great authoress through this story. I will say Jane Austen, while I do enjoy her book, she's never been like a favorite author for me. Even like learning about her history, she just doesn't quite connect with me the same way other authors do. But there's a wonderful coziness to her that I do really appreciate and enjoy and you definitely feel that shine through in her biography as well. And wrapping up the literary women part of this discussion, I have this behemoth, The Brontes by Juliet Barker. Everything you could possibly want to know about the Bronte sisters is in this book and it's so well done. I really really love this one. I just think the Brontes are fascinating. The way they lived their lives, the way they sought after happiness and oftentimes fell short because of their own mental health struggles. It's so fascinating and Juliet Barker really explores it in such a great way in here. I definitely think if you are interested in the Brontes, if you enjoy their books, if you really want to know a lot about them and are willing to pick up something like this, it is so worth it. This is one of the non-fictions I've read in my life that actually made me cry and just get emotional in all sorts of ways and so I just really really love it and highly recommend it if you are interested in the Brontes. The next book I don't own but I really do want to get my hands on it because it's one of my favorite non-fiction books of all time and that is The Creation of Anne Boleyn by Susan Bordeaux. This is I believe it's called The Historiography maybe where it's following basically how people view Anne Boleyn as a historical figure over time with the different sort it starts off discussing more primary sources and their thoughts and exploring the truth behind what's actually written by the primary sources and then it goes into how over time you know with different cultural attitudes and media and things how that has influenced the way people see Anne Boleyn as a figure and I think it's just wonderful. I absolutely love it. Anne Boleyn is a figure who has a lot of flaws. I don't think anybody can deny that but also is very little is really known about her because we don't have a lot of primary sources from her. A lot of those things, her letters, her writings in general were burned and destroyed and so we just don't know very much about who she really was as a person except from things that happened in history and also other people's opinions of her and so it's a really really interesting book that explores the problems with that and just the facts behind such a historical topic as Anne Boleyn and I just really really love it. I think it is great to read for her storyathon because it's not only focused on Anne Boleyn but it's really exploring how women because of the lack of records and things that come directly from them there's a lot we just don't know about their personalities about who they were as people. The same can be said depending on the time period about a lot of men as well in history but there's an extra lack of grasp on who women were throughout history just because of less records being available, less direct and primary sources being available. 
people. And usually if there are a good amount of primary sources, it's because they made a lot of enemies and a lot of what we have is from their enemies. And so it's just, it's a very, very interesting topic. And this book really explores it well. It's very engaging to read. If you listen to the audiobook like I did, the narrator sounds very much like a gossipy old lady and it just makes it extra fun. And I highly recommend it. Like I said, it's one of my favorite nonfiction books of all time. Potentially even my favorite. I feel like I need to revisit it because it's been a few years, but it's one that's really stuck with me and I love it. The last one I have here, you'll probably be like, Tori, that's not about a woman, but let me explain. So the book I have is John Adams by David McCullough. Obviously this is primarily about John Adams, but if you know anything about John Adams and his place in history, you know that his wife had such a huge influence on him and they were really a partnership. Like everything he did and said was in some way connected with his wife, whether she inspired it, whether she argued against it, whether she just encouraged him, whatever the case. And so all throughout this book, we learn a lot about Abigail Adams as well. I do really want to read at some point a biography specifically about her, but I do think they're such a strong couple that really, if you learn about either one, it's going to be about the other person just as much because of how united they were. And I just, I really look up to them as far as their relationship goes. And I think Abigail Adams was such an incredible woman who recognized the need for both genders to be active and doing things and really valued the freedom of both genders to be able to do things together and be united and I just love the way that's explored in this book on behind the scenes a little bit but you can definitely see it there and there's actually a lot of sections in this that do specifically focus on Abigail and what she was experiencing as well and so yes it's technically about John Adams because he's the name that more people will know but also this book is just as much about Abigail Adams as well. In fact, when Abigail dies, spoiler alert, I actually cried in this one too because I just, I love their relationship, like I said, and I love her. Moving into fiction, I have organized these just based on time periods. So starting with the oldest time period and moving forward, the first book I have is A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes. This is a story following the Trojan War from all of the women involves perspective, so it jumps around a a lot in perspective throughout the book but it does so in a really great way. Some of you may be like oh we don't know the Trojan War probably wasn't really real. I think there's enough history showing that there was some level of truth to the experiences discussed in the Iliad that I feel confident sharing this because I think probably a lot of what's in the Iliad was inspired by true events even if it wasn't actually all true and that means a lot of the women and their experiences which are very well explored in this book were also very true to experiences within Greek and just old world world wars. Oh gosh. Old world wars. That is such a tongue twister. I cannot say it. But anyway, so reading this, we're really experiencing it behind the emotion. It's not being made to be super romanticized or anything. This is really digging into the female experience. There is some discussion of goddesses as well and more mythological figures within the story. But on the whole, it's just really exploring women's experience in war at this time. And it does so in a really honest, an interesting way and I just I really love this book. I think Natalie Haynes is a wonderful author. I need to read more by her. I do have at least one on my shelf that I intend to read and then others that I would love to get my hands on at some point as well. But yes, I think this is a great book. If you're interested in the Iliad and are a little intimidated by this, I think that this is, if you're interested in the Iliad and find it a little bit intimidating, this I think is a really good starting point. It's well written. The characters are well explored despite the fact that were only in their perspectives for a few pages. It just all comes together so well and I definitely recommend it. Jumping forward quite a bit in time to the medieval period, towards the end of the medieval period, we have Cecily by Annie Garthwaite. This is a fictionalized version of the story of Cecily Neville, who was the mother of both Edward IV and Richard III. Two famous kings of England, I guess in Richard's case he's an infamous king of England. If you've been on this channel for a while, you know that I love 
love Richard III. I'm a big Richard III fan and I was really interested to learn a little bit about his mother who in what I had read previously wasn't very well explored as a figure. The only thing I really remembered specifically reading about her was in The Sun and Splendor at the very beginning we get a really powerful scene between her and Mag Margaret of Anjou and that's really stuck with me for a long time but I didn't know much about her and honestly this first little portion of The Wars of the Roses I didn't know very much about because it's not as well explored in other works so it was really interesting reading this especially from the Yorkist perspective because I've read a little bit in Wars of the Roses by Con Eggleton we learn about some of this stuff from the perspective of the Lancasters and so it was really interesting getting a slightly different perspective I thought Cecily was so well drawn by Annie Garthwaite she is made to be a woman of the medieval times where she wants to have children and sees the value of family and is religious and has that belief in God but also is still a strong woman who has her opinions and fights for what she wants and I really love that more realistic portrayal that's not always in historical fiction so if you're interested in the Wars of the Roses I definitely think this is a great read and yeah I just really love it and this cover is glorious. Next we have a book that has a little bit of a fantastical element added in but it is about real figures and that is My Lady Jane by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jodie Meadows. This is a YA book that is basically playing with history. It's discussing Lady Jane Grey who was Queen of England for nine days in between the death of Edward VI and the reign of Mary or Bloody Mary or Mary the First, whatever you want to call her. However, this has a little bit of a magical twist where people, instead of it being Protestants and Catholics, it's shapeshifters and non-shapeshifters. And it's just a really fun story, but also exploring a real historical figure in such a wonderful way. It just really is a fun book, very entertaining. And like I said, it just, it has some interesting things to say and some twists on history that is just really interesting and fun. And yeah, I feel like I can't say much more than that, but it's one that stuck with me. I really enjoy it and definitely recommend it if you want a little bit more of a fun her story -a -thon read. Jumping up to the mid 1800s we have Yellow Wife by Sadeka Johnson. Now this one is not about specifically a real person but it is very much inspired by real women and their actual lived experiences. It follows a young woman who is born into slavery in the U.S. South and at the time there were some slave traders who would actually marry slaves because no nobody else would be willing to marry them and give them children. So they would choose slaves to become their wives so that they can have families and posterity and all of that jazz. But obviously these women are still slaves and there's a lot of difficulties that they had to experience through that. So that is what this story follows as a young woman who experiences this. And it's just heartbreaking actually, as you can imagine, but it's very well written. It made me very emotional many times. And I think it was a really, really interesting look at a different side of slavery than often we discuss. Obviously, it's all bad and worth talking about so that we learn from it. But it's nice to see a little bit of a different perspective as far as a different experience within this broader scope that we're able to honor these women who had a very specific experience that in some ways seems less bad, but also just had its own problems that other slaves wouldn't have experienced. So yes, if you haven't read this, definitely recommend it. It is very, very good. And the last one I have is early 20th century, and that is The Paper Daughters of Chinatown by Heather B. Moore. Now this one's not the best written, I have to say. I don't necessarily love Heather B. Moore's writing style, but we're exploring in this a woman who helped to join and lead a mission home in Chinatown in San Francisco in the late 1800s, early 1900s, where they specifically sought to save and aid women who were from China who were tricked over to the United States being told that they'd receive a marriage and riches and all of those things that they really need for their poor families only to be sold into human trafficking and so this mission home works to get these women out of this situation take care of them teach them educate them and help them to build better lives for themselves in America and so we specifically follow the main woman who works worked for decades to help with this situation and did a lot for this mission home and for these girls. And then we follow a fictional viewpoint of one of the girls just exploring her own experience as a representative of all of the other women that were helped. And then there's a few like
like side characters that are like real girls who were helped by this woman in this mission home and it's just a really interesting look at a part of history that we don't often talk about don't often know about and dealing with an issue that unfortunately is still around today and I just really love looking at this experience and learning a little bit more about it and I think the author treats it in a very respectful and wonderful way while also not making it gratuitous and I just really yeah appreciated that realistic look that was still within certain limits so it wasn't just to the point where you're like okay you're just trying to shock the reader now you're not trying to actually explore these women's lives and their experience so definitely recommend this if you're interested in this topic would like to learn a little bit more again the writing style isn't necessarily my favorite but I think the topic being explored is just worth the read and that is all for this video there are many other books that I have read and want to read that are focused on her story that I am really excited to get to and discuss in the future let me know down below some of your favorite women in history reads if you have any that you specifically think I would enjoy let me know or if you have thoughts about anything I discussed today let me know that as well I hope you are having a wonderful week a wonderful reading month and I hope to see you soon happy reading bye